Hi hey everyone, welcome back to the DevOps Lab. I am Damien Brady and I'm joined once again by colleague Abel Wang. Thanks for joining me again. Absolutely. Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit more about database deployments. Um, we did a previous show uh, where we were mm -hmm. talking about deploying to on-prem uh, machines or infrastructure as a service, so um, VMs in the cloud and things like that. Um, well, uh, one of the steps you had as part of your deployment was deploying a database change. Correct. This is another question that we get asked all the time. How do I make my database changes alongside my code changes? Right. So I thought it'd be a good idea to drill into that uh, step, that task, you know, what you're actually doing to update the database, mm -hmm. um, and maybe walk through how you do these database changes alongside your code changes. Sure, we can do that. Okay, awesome. So I, I think it's super important that we actually have our database schema checked into source control mm -hmm. right alongside our source. Because once we're able to do that, we're able to version everything all together. Okay. So the easiest way to do that, and there's a couple different approaches you can take. Uh, one way that I really like is by using SQL Server data tools or the database projects inside of Visual Studio. Okay, yeah. nice. So this is something that comes with Visual Studio. And a SSDT or a database project, what it does is it encapsulates the schema in a project. Okay, right. So here in Visual Studio, is my database project. And you can see that it encapsulates the schema of my database. I've got a couple tables, and here you have it. Um, you can point it at an existing database, and it'll suck in the schema, or you can create it directly from scratch. Okay. I see that there's a lot of scripts there. Is mm -hmm. the, are these scripts that you um, have written yourself? You said that it sucks in the schema of the existing database, if mm -hmm. you've already got one. Yeah. Um, and so it's just generating the create table statements and all that kind of it'll stuff? It'll generate the create tables for you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a database that is sucking in, it'll grab all that and generate the scripts for you. You can generate it by hand, or you can use this handy dandy visual <laughs> UI tool to create all your tables as well. Okay, awesome. So this is, this is kind of similar to how you create a database anyway. Yes. Um, but if you've done that ahead of time, you can always just use the tool to say, here's my starting point, right. and then go from there. Right. Okay, so you have this, uh, this project in uh, Visual Studio. Yep. Um, what, sorry, just to make sure, what is the project type? Like, how do you actually add this to your solution? This a is a database type. So let me see if I remember how to add one of these in. <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Right. Let's uh, try File, New Project. And the project type, I think it's under Database, but when my window pops up, we'll see if we can find it. SQL Server. And underneath SQL Server, SQL we do Server a SQL database. Server database project. Okay, awesome. So it's right there. It's, it's, it's right there, just ready for you to use. Now, you notice there's also a Ready Roll SQL Server type project? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> Ready Roll is, is one of our partners. This is another way that you can encapsulate the schema and to, to use DevOps best practices in deploying your, your databases as well. Yeah. It's kind of a different approach. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other, but there are two different approaches, right? Mm. Uh, uh, SSDT. It, that uses like state base. At this point in time, this is what my schema looks like. Okay. Uh, ready roll is more like data migration. You know, have you used uh, EF code first? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty much EF code first migrations, except you don't need to have EF. So it's entity framework code right, first. Right. Yep. Got it. Um, Sorry, I've been at Microsoft too long. Yeah, no, so <laughs> to the TLAs. Um, so yeah. So you got those two options like out of the yeah. box. You can yep. either say this is what my database looks like. And then um, I'll, I'll talk to you about making changes in a sec. Mm -hmm. You can say, this is what my database looks like, or more explicitly say, here are the changes that move from version A to version B, or version Correct. 1 to version 2, which is the ready roll solution. Correct. Okay, so SQL Server Data Tools, um, you have an existing database, you've added that project and pointed at that database, mm -hmm. it's sucked in all the schema. Yep. Now, if I want to. Uh, uh, add this to source control, that's just something that you can, it's just files, right? It's just files, so you just check it in just like you check in all of your source. There's, okay. there's nothing to it. Awesome. So I went ahead and already checked my code into VSTS, so let me jump into VSTS. And you'll notice, here's my sources directory, here's my database project folder, and here's my project, SQL project, and if I go into my DBA folder, you'll be able to see my stored procs and all my tables. Okay. Awesome. So you have this code in source control. How do I actually deploy it? Like we've, or we've how got, do I build it? Or how do I build it first? You're right. Yeah, yeah you have to build it first. So right. um, does it compile scripts? What, how, does it, how does that work? So the build actually happens automatically for you. If, you, if you're using a Visual Studio, uh, a Visual Studio build task. Oh, okay. 
because it's a Visual Studio project, right? So, so the Visual Studio build task will automatically build this database project for you. Right. And the build artifact that comes out of it is going to be a DAC pack file. Okay. And that DAC pack represents the state of the database at a particular a time? A DAC pack basically is the schema of your database. You take the schema of your database and flatten it into XML file, and you sort of have what a DAC pack is. I, I know I'm totally <laughs> simplifying things, but in a nutshell, that's what it is. Okay. Right? It's a representation of the schema of your database. Okay. So if we have a look in the build itself, I think um, last time we looked at this uh, example, you had a build definition that talked about that, that DAC pack, or it, it did something with that database project? Yes. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what I actually did. Okay. So here's my build pipeline. Uh, I restore packages from NuGet. I build my Visual Studio solution. And one of the build artifacts here is going to be a DAC pack file. Of course, right. But I need to make sure I take that DAC pack file and I copy it to the release folder, or it doesn't, when I publish it, it, it I won't publish my DAC pack file. Okay. As a build artifact, right? So I need to make sure I copy it. That's why I added this task right here, copy my DAC pack file. So if you notice, I'm going to go ahead and start from my sources directory. Mm -hmm. I'm going to search for anything that ends in .dac pack. Yep. And once I have that, let's copy it into my staging directory. And then the subsequent steps that you almost always have in these, which is upload publish. my artifacts or publish my artifacts. Yeah, right down there. Right down there. That yep. will push that up as well. Yep. Awesome. So you have your application uh, compiled ready to go, and you have your DAC pack, which is the compiled or the, the built uh, database project right. as an artifact as well. Right. So the next thing you need to do is actually make whatever changes have been made to your database alongside deploying your project. Correct. Okay. So that happens in uh, release management, right? Yes. Or the team foundation server release stuff. Right, right, right. So can we have a look at that? Sure. So let's jump into my release. And I'll show you what we actually did. So in this example, I'm releasing on-prem. So because I'm releasing on-prem, when I deploy to my database, I'm going to be using a SQL Server database deploy task. So All this right. is a task that comes out of the box where you, let's go ahead and click on it so you can see. You can literally set it to say, you know what, I'm going to deploy by using a DAC pack. Now, this task here right. is for on-prem databases. So I can deploy using a DAC pack. I can use query files or inline SQL. Right. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to say, use my DAC pack. And then I'm going to say, uh, well, actually, I can even search for it and say, where is my DAC pack? So th this is my build artifact, right? So I can find my build artifact, drill down in here, find the actual DAC pack. Sometimes a little bit. <laughs> it's buried kind of buried, deep. Yeah. And go ahead and click on OK. Right? So I th yeah, you've already got that, so it's not giving you the OK right. button. But right. So then once I have this, what this is actually doing now is it's going to take this DAC pack, and it's going to do a schema compare between the database that you're trying to deploy to mm -hmm. and what's in the DAC pack. And then it sees the differences, and it generates for you scripts that will take your database, turn it into a schema so that it matches what's in the DAC pack. Right, so it's generating whatever SQL scripts need yep. to be run to bring that database into line with the current version of your application. Correct. Okay, which is exactly what you might do anyway as a DBA who's doing this stuff manually. Right. It's just that now it's automated alongside the version of the code. It totally automates it for you. If you want to actually sit there and look at the scripts, mm -hmm. you can do that as well. You can, set up a, you can set up this task so instead of just generating the scripts and automatically running it, mm -hmm. you can say, generate the scripts, then show them to me, and then maybe I can approve it, then we can manually run those scripts. Right. So there's a lot of different approaches that you can take. So if you want a bit more control over it, you have that yeah. option as well. Yeah. Okay, and of course, because you're deploying to in your case, you have a Canary environment and then production. Yeah. This change gets made to the Canary environment, and mm -hmm. you can verify that that actually works. Yeah. And if it does, then you can promote onto your production environment. Yeah. So I think you've done, you've got a couple of completed um, builds, right? Mm -hmm. And so they've done the database deployment uh, as well as the, the web deployment. And because it's version you know, 1.5 or whatever of your application, those things are actually done automatically in parallel. Yes. Or not in parallel necessarily, but at the same time. Sequentially, yeah. Yeah, sequentially. Yep. So another interesting thing is out of the box, if you don't tweak this a little bit, mm -hmm. there's protections in place where it won't let you do anything that destroys data. Oh, right. Destroying data is bad, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> but, but there are times when you absolutely want to destroy data. Mm -hmm. For instance, I have a column. I don't need it anymore. 
I've already migrated the data to other places or I just don't need it, I want to delete this column. Yeah. And I get asked questions, how do you actually do that? Yeah. So behind the scenes, what this, this task is actually using, it's using SQL package.exe mm -hmm. to run and do your schema compares and do your updates. Okay. So if you search for SQL package.exe, you'll see that we're able to add a whole bunch of command line parameters. All right. And one of those is going to let you destroy data. Okay. So in VSTS, if you need to destroy data, all you need to do is add the additional argument of slash p, block on possible data loss, equals false. Wow. So and now you're able to delete and destroy data. Nice. So it's safe out of the box, but you know. So what you might even want to do is have that warning when you get to, or that you know, prevention when you get mm -hmm. to a canary environment. But so it's going to stop you from deploying it, from destroying any data when yeah. you go to your canary environment until you explicitly say, yeah, no, this is okay. And Correct. then that promotion to production, by that stage, you've already tested this and you know that it works. Yeah. So you're a bit more comfortable doing whatever the script says yep. that you're going to do. Yep. That's very cool. This is a common pattern I see with a lot of these tasks. They call out to other command lines that you might want to you know, run anyway, or you might run anyway if you're doing it manually. Right. So you get full control if you really want it. That's the power of VSTS, both the build and the release pipelines. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I haven't actually seen too much of the Dacpack stuff. I'm, you mentioned there's a couple of options. I tend yeah. to go down the uh, other route of the explicit scripts and entity framework migrations, mm -hmm. or there's other tools like dbup and readyroll and, Correct. and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, but it's awesome to see you know, how much uh, safety and how much control there is in this as yeah. well. There's, there's all sorts of tools that can help you move your database from one version to the next. Uh, it, I like SSDT, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of different options. What I tell people is I, I really want that schema version alongside with my source code, and I, I want to be able to auto-deploy right in my release pipeline, right with my code. Yep. So if I can do that, I don't really care which, which version you go or which, which type of solution you choose. Nice. So the other really big advantage of this stuff as well is if your production server goes down or you, know, you have a server that um, wasn't there before, like um, maybe you want to do some load testing right. on a brand new environment, you don't have to have that existing database. It's not just a collection of three scripts that go from version five to version six. Yeah. If you have version zero, you don't have anything, that whole schema will will get created, everything will get run. That's one of the things that I love about SSDT is it is not, it is not version based, right? Mm -hmm. Or it is not like version one to version two, or version two to version three, yep. or version seven to version eight. I literally can have whatever the schema is and I can turn it into the correct schema. That's awesome. um, th there are often times that I'm in a situation where I have a database that's in a really weird state because either me or a DB8, fine, it was me. <laughs> I went in there, added columns, did whatever directly to the database. Yes. You're never supposed to do that, right? Yep. But sometimes I take shortcuts, right? So yeah. I did do that. <laughs> and because of that, now I don't know how, if I'm using a migration space approach, I don't know how to get to the correct state to actually run a migration anymore because yeah. I've just messed it up. Using SSDT, it doesn't matter. It will take whatever state your database is in and turn it into the correct state. That's awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for showing me sure. through that one. Um, and hopefully, yeah, uh, once again, we're trying to answer questions that people have and try to walk through existing problems that people have that we maybe haven't talked about yet. So mm -hmm. it's awesome to see that one um, in VSTS and, and that kind of power that SSDT gives you. Cool. So thanks so much for doing that. Um, Thanks, everybody, for joining us once again. Uh, stay tuned to the show for much more DevOps Lab content, and we will see you next time.